Hello everybody, welcome to Sophistic Cakes by Mary. For this tutorial, I'm gonna do another draped cake. This cake is all fondant, and I also added some embellishment with some lacy floral bas relief, and I added some dried floral. So let's get started with frosting our cake. I'm using my American buttercream, which I will leave a link in the description if I remember, but I will leave a I card for sure. Now these cakes were already layered and crumb coated, which just helps me um, keep my videos in check lengthwise. And then just go ahead and smooth the sides and pull that fondant into the center around the top. Now this doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna put fondant on top of it, but make it as, as straight and um, just in the best shape that you can because fondant does not hide mistakes. It actually will emphasize, if you have lumps and bumps and dents in your buttercream underneath, it will show. So just take the time to make sure that it's, it's fairly smooth. I, of course, can't help but try to make it perfect because that's just how I'm wired. Sometimes it's not necessary, but I do it anyway. And you could see there where that my buttercream is definitely chunky. There are some issues with water in, extra water in our fondant, or I'm sorry, I saw I was doing fondant, extra water in our butter. We're dealing with it. And to, this is how I am uh, doing the fondant wrap. I want to get those sharp corners. So I go ahead and I roll out a piece of fondant, as you saw me do, flip my cake over, and that is the easiest way to get a flat top and, and to trim the excess off from around the top since we're doing this in two pieces. I like to do it that way if I think of it ahead of time. And then I rolled out the two pieces to get that will be wrapped around each cake. I measured the height and the circumference and I use my measurements on my mat to help me cut it the right size. I always allow a little bit of extra length and height just to make sure that I have enough fondant. It's easier to cut it away than it is to try to get it to stretch once it's already on the cake. And I do like to let these pieces sit out for about 15-20 minutes to firm up before I wrap them around the cakes. It's a little easier to lift it up. They don't stretch and pull that way. And then I'm doing the same thing, turning it upside down and wrap it, wrapping the fondant around. This is a very easy way to get your sharp corners. And just use your ruler to over, you overlap the pieces. That's where your excess length comes in handy. You can get a very smooth, tight join in the, in the back. This is always going to be the back because where there's a cut, I always leave that in the back. But yeah, you can put the two pieces on top of each other and cut them both at the same time and then they match up perfect. And just make sure that you take the time to smooth it and remove any air bubbles. And since the fondant has had time to firm up a little bit, you don't have to put it in the refrigerator before cutting off that excess off the bottom there. It's already firm enough. You don't have to worry about it. And then just go in and redefine your, your top, where your top meets your sides. And I attached this with um, shortening is what I attached it with. You can use water if you prefer, or even some um, simple syrup works also. I like to use shortening because it allows for, if you need to move that piece, if you don't get it lined up just right, you can remove it and replace it. When you're using water or the simple syrups, you're kind of committed. So I like to use the shortening and it does hold just fine. And this is how I'm doing the bas relief. I have these little lace pieces, um, silicone molds. And instead of trying to get the fondant into the mold perfectly and then just removing it in one piece, that takes a lot of time. Um, there's a lot of detail in these molds. So I just go ahead and, and impress the pattern on the fondant, let it firm up for a while, about another 30 minutes or so. And then just use your X-Acto knife to just cut around it. You can use your fingers to smooth the edges if you have any um, cut edges that are not completely smooth. The heat from your hand will kind of just smooth that out. I'm gonna do this to a couple of pieces here.
And like I said, after it has had time to firm up, you can tell it's firm to the touch. When you pick it up and it doesn't just completely droop in your hand, it's a little bit more rigid, then you know it's time to go ahead and cut. You could cut before that, but there's gonna be a lot of stretching and pulling and misshapenness, is that a word? Is now. Misshapenness happening. And here I'm using my fingers to smooth those edges like I explained earlier. And there's your lace piece. I think they're really pretty. And I just set those aside until I'm ready to use them. I'm just using some straws cut to the same height to support the top tier. And I'm just using three straws because the top tier is a four inch cake. It's a smaller cake. It doesn't need, you know, five straws. Three is just fine. And then I'm just pushing that fondant, I'm just um, coaxing it down to meet the bottom tier. You'll find that you can do that even if your refrigerator, your, um, sorry, your cake has been in the refrigerator firming up like mine were. If you work with it slowly, you'll get, eventually get it to push down. And this is how I'm making my draped fabric pieces. I like to roll it out fairly thin and then just use these, um, what would you call these, skewers? These are or dowels, these are dowels actually, to help form the drapes. See how easy that is? And then just cut your excess off the side and just kind of tuck it underneath so you don't have a cut side, a cut edge showing. And just pull those out and then just kind of push them together and pinch those ends together. And form it into kind of a little bit of a U shape or just a, a curvature for the drape. Cut off those extra pieces and then I set it aside and let that firm up a little bit as well. There's a, a repeating thing happening here. I do like to let my fondant sit and firm up. I spent a lot of years wrestling with the fondant and trying to get it where I want it and then uh, it just saves you a lot of trouble, trust me, to just let it firm up. And for the swag on the bottom, I wanted to have a, a few different textures. So I use skewers and the straws. And if you have a longer piece, you will have to kind of move those down to get your pleat all the way down the, the piece. Now this is a larger piece than I needed, but I like to have more than I need because you can always cut it away. I think I said that once already. Did I? I don't know. I've been editing a lot of videos, getting ready for my trip, making sure I have some um, material for you to watch. So if I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry and just kind of taper in that top and redefine those pleats where you need to. They don't need to be perfect. I fight that urge to make them perfect. Fabric is not perfect, right? It's not gonna pleat just perfectly. So if it's not perfect, don't worry about it. And I just drape that down the top, top tier, and use my um, flexi shapes, shapers, I think those are called. Oh, I can't remember what those are called. Fle flexi smoothers. Is that what it's, they're called? I've had them for a little while to just kind of redefine the shape. And I used water to attach that. And I'm using water to attach these lace pieces also. And I'm putting those down first so that the draping hangs over part of it. You can see I tucked that one in the top because there's less fabric up there. But the, the piece hanging down on this bottom tier is gonna be bigger, it's bigger and it's gonna be heavier and a little bit harder to lift up and move. So I put those lace pieces in there first. You can see I had way too much. So you just pinch it together and cut off your excess. Now there's gonna be that little um, piece draped in between the two pieces. So that's gonna hide that spot. And I just made that the same way that I made the first swag, just in a sm much smaller version. And all of this is attached to the cake with water. Now just to get those the bar release to stand out a little bit, I have some pearlized um, airbrush color, opal pearlized color, and I'm just kind of brushing it across the bar relief pieces so that it just grabs onto the texture. You don't have to paint the whole thing. You'll get the idea. It's just kind of um, sticking to the top, the top pieces of the texture. Now, when you replace these, you can wrap them together with some floral tape and attach them to skewers if that makes you feel safer about it, the food safetiness of it. Um, I am not serving this to anyone. This is for decorative purposes only. So um, sometimes I do wrap the ends and sometimes I don't, but I would suggest that you do. 
And spraying a little confectioner's glaze on that pompous grass may help hold it in place and not be as sheddy. Just like hairspray on hair. So oh, there you go, guys. Hope you liked it. Another pleated cake. I think these are gorgeous, and I hope you give it a try. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.